Hello everyone, I thought it might be interesting to talk about um, the different types of watch movements as primarily you have quartz, you have manual and you have automatic and automatic and manual are pretty much the same thing an automatic is simply a manual that has a rotor in it so once you've wound it you can keep it moving by, by activity on the wrist and then you have more interesting watches now I don't have a pure manual watch so I'm afraid I can't demonstrate that to you I thought my World War II German watch might have been a manual, but when I shook it, it started going, so it's clearly an automatic. So, uh, the important thing to realise is up until about the 1970s, uh, late 60s, early 70s, all watches were mechanical, or mechanical automatics. Then, what happened was Seiko innovated the quartz design, and lots and lots of companies started developing their own, and it made watches very affordable, very cheap. It led to something called the, um, you know, uh, quartz crisis or the quartz revolution. Now, I personally think quartz is a good thing, but there's lots and lots of people that hate it. So we'll go over the movements. Um, so, right, this seconda on the left is a quartz. Now, what you'll notice from it ticking is it's taking very sort of solid second steps. Now, a quartz is incredibly accurate. It basically uses a crystal inside the watch that's powered by a battery that resonates and that um, electrical charge can measure a precise second. A quartz watch is accurate to about five seconds in a month, or maybe even more accurate than that, which is pretty incredible if you think, you know, in six months you're going to be like 30 seconds out, something like that. So when you come to adjust for daylight savings, if you're in a country that has that, you've lost about 30 seconds. You barely need to adjust the watch when you change the hour. And, you know, if you didn't change the watch all year, you'd only gain about a minute, which is pretty incredible, um, to be honest. So, quartz, you know, means that you can have now a very cheap watch that's very accurate. You just need to replace the battery every few years, that's it. And it means there's lots of styles to choose from, and it's cheap. Now, what we have here is a more traditional watch. Uh, this is what's a mechanical automatic. Basically, when you wind the... Um, crown on the side you'll charge it up and then the automatic movement also allows you to keep it charged now what you'll notice with the second hand on this watch if the camera will focus properly which I don't think it's going to do is that the second hand is a much smoother sweeping action um, rather than the very precise tick 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 of the quartz which is something if I hold the watches up to the camera in a moment you'll notice now Obviously, automatics and manuals can be very beautiful. Um, and, yeah. I mean, I like them, but you have to admit that quartz has completely changed the watch industry. And I do get a lot of dinosaurs commenting on my watches saying they're crap, you should buy a Rolex, they're the only good watches, which is just really not true at all. If For me, if a watch accurately tells the time, and it's robust enough, it won't break, and it looks nice, that's all I need in a watch. I don't need to pay several thousands of pounds for a watch that won't tell time as accurately as a quartz because it's mechanical. Now, as I said in another video, the watch I'm currently wearing, if you can find it, is the Vostok, which I've now customised. And this as well is an automatic, um, but I like the history behind it and they're cheap. An automatic is fine if you're not paying, you know, stupid money for it. I mean, if you're really into watches, sure pay as much as you want for it, because I have hobbies, I spend money on those. But don't tell people that any watch is crap because it's not a you know, several thousand pound automatic, that's just nonsense. Um, so hopefully you might be able to hear this ticking if it's quiet enough. Whether or not the camera's picking that up, I don't know. But um, basically, a manual or automatic will go sort of tick, 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 like that as it ticks, or as a quartz goes tick 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 if you think what a wall clock makes that's a quartz movement okay and now we have uh, another very good innovation and um, this is a Seiko kinetic and basically what this is is it's kind of a hybrid it's quartz movement and the quartz battery but it's actually charged by a rotor like an automatic so whereas a automatic like the rotary or even a Rolex will have a couple of days at most on its power reserve you know, if it's fully wound or you've been wearing it all day on your wrist. Same as my Vostok, that's a 31 hour power reserve. Again, if we can get it in frame. Um, 
One of these will actually have a couple of months on the power reserve, depending on the model, anywhere from a few weeks to a couple of months, so it's easily superior in that way, and it tells time more accurately again, because it's a quartz movement. You can see there the second hand is just tick, 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 precisely hitting the second marker each time. Now, um, basically how this works is the rotor inside recharges the quartz battery. So rather than needing a battery replacement, you simply have a watch that you know, will keep ticking because your wrist movements are charging the watch. And that's pretty fascinating for me. Uh, other companies have done this design. I'm pretty sure Seiko innovated it like they did lots of watch innovations. But there's also, um, I think, Citizen do the EcoDrive, which is the light-powered version. So basically, fluorescent, you know, uh, either UV sunlight or internal lights like fluorescence charge the watch up through like a solar panel in it. And then again, you've got a long power reserve, even if the watch is completely in the dark. And because uh, the high-end models have atomic movement, which is like quartz, but even better, and it's quite complicated, so I won't get into how that works, but they're accurate to one second in a million years, so you never need to adjust them, apart from, you know, daylight savings or whatever. And then you have the um, cheaper sort of quartz movements ones. They're called EcoDrive movement, but again, like the Seiko, it's their own variant of quartz that charges up. It will tell the time... Uh, very accurately because it's a good solid movement like quartz and it charges its own battery up. So with a kinetic like this and with a quartz movement watch, sorry not quartz movement, with like a sort of citizen type quartz movement, like an eco drive, you will eventually have to have the battery pack replaced when it's no longer holding charge efficiently. You know like any other thing like a mobile once you charged it too much the battery won't hold charge you need a new battery. Uh, Normal quartz needs its battery replacing every few years, and that's very, very cheap to do. If you think how cheap you can buy some quartz wristwatches for like a fiver each, the battery's even less than that. Obviously, sometimes the service of having it fitted will cost more. And you're meant to have an automatic serviced every year, couple of years, and depending on who makes them, that can be very expensive. For example, another reason why I have no interest in Rolexes is because having the service charge done is normally a couple of hundred quid at the minimum. And I don't see a watch as a good investment, despite people telling me my watch is a crap again and that I should buy a Rolex. If the watch costs a fortune in the first place, then every couple of years I have to pay, you know, more than a couple of these watches combined to actually have the thing serviced. That makes no sense to me. Even if it has good resale value, I'd be better putting £8,000 on the stock market and making, you know, a hell of a lot more money by doing that. So that's, anyway... With a lot of rambling, that's the watch movements. You've got quartz, which is the standard thing for most watches. Very innovative, good. Not as beautiful as an automatic mechanical watch, but what more can you ask for? Then you've got automatic mechanicals. You know, the good old-fashioned type clocks with all the moving parts that keep it going. And I like automatic mechanicals, but I wouldn't pay an arm and a leg for one. And then you've got, like, the innovative designs, which are normally built around quartz, which are, like, a hybrid of the two. You don't need a battery, uh, you know, apart from maybe a replacement every 15, 20 years. And it will hold the time very, very well. So, yeah, that's the difference between quartz automatic manuals and sort of more modern quartz variants. Hope you found it interesting. If you like this sort of video, subscribe for more. Thank you.